I never saw a 70-year-old grandma mummy. Yeah, her booty looked like a raisin. <laughs> Welcome to week 13 of The Tailgate. I'm Michelle Margot with Ralph Vacchiano. We're gonna be joined by Bart Scott in just a second, who tells us what exactly is wrong with Sam Darnold and why Patriots fans are, quote, dorks. But first, the Giants are in first place and nobody knew this was more of a possibility than us. The winner of the NFC East is... It is the Philadelphia Eagles. Is it time to reevaluate whether or not Daniel Jones is the quarterback of the future for them? Well, it might be. I just picked the Eagles to win the NFC East, or at least my crystal ball did. That's right, Michelle. We had it on the tailgate first. We have been all over the Giants winning this division. It's why I went to the extravagant step of taping over to my Islanders logo on my foam finger to make it a Giants logo. They, they're going to win this thing. Six and ten, they're going to win this division. Unbelievably to most people, but not to us. We start with the opening coin toss. And Ralph, how did we get to this point where just four weeks ago we were talking about whether or not they should draft a QB? Well, kind of by accident. Their schedule was ridiculously soft. They played Washington, Philadelphia, and Cincinnati without Joey Burrow. So those were three somewhat easy wins. And look, let's face it, we say this every week, the division stinks. Well, switching gears to the Jets, Sam Darnold finally had all of his receivers healthy and it still didn't go that well. So why aren't things clicking for him? People around the league blame the Jets. I mean, the situation is just dismal. You know, they kind of feel like they have dragged him down. Let's be honest, he's headed to a, a different place. It has to be a better place. He's headed to a better place because the Jets at this point look like locks to be 0-16 and then they draft Trevor Lawrence and they have to trade Sam Darnold. We're basically watching the end of the Sam Darnold era, and it's kind of sad. Well, let's show some love for one of the reasons behind the Giants turnaround with a new segment that we call Get to Know Graham Gano. So each of us are going to throw out a fact, and the other is going to have to guess whether the statement is a Gano or a Gayes. Is Graham Gano's middle name Clark? That is a Gayes, absolutely. You looked it up. I, how would I look it what up? Mean, I didn't yes, know what you were going to Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I'm just that smart. Graham Gano has five kids. No, he does not. Yes, he does. Is Graham Gano pretty good at kickball? Oh my gosh, you would think he'd have to be, so yes. Yeah, yes, he is. He had to be the best kid ever at kickball when you think about it, if he turned out to be a professional kicker. That's all you have to do is have a strong leg. He named his dogs Bert and Ernie. Gano. That is Gano because that is ridiculous. His cousin kicked the first points in the first ever college football game. No, 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 no. That would, you know, unless his cousin was born like 100 years before him, it's got to be a Gano. Uh, it's actually a good yes. Who could forget SG Gano's kick in the Rutgers Princeton matchup in 1869? Not wow, me. Wow, that that is a distant cousin, but okay, we'll 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 call it a cousin. That's fine. We high step in the friend zone and welcome in former Jet and current SNY analyst Bart Scott. Thanks so much for joining us. You what good? happens when you, when you do stuff from home, you don't have a makeup and, and stylish anymore. So I'm just, this is me. This is unedited me, unfiltered me, I guess. Same here. Just no makeup. My hair is not done at all. Same. Woke up like this. What is your overall assessment of Sam Darnold? Um, to me, it looks like he's regressed a little bit. And I don't know if it's because of the playmakers or he's rusty coming back. But um, his decision making, he, he's pressing a little bit. So I don't know if this is the real Sam Darnold. He looked much better under the Todd Bowles era. He's not, you know, really taking a baton like we thought because I think he hears the Trevor Lawrence rumors and he's understanding that maybe this won't be the place where he becomes that uh, franchise quarterback. And the more and more that, you know, he plays like that, the more and more the likelihood is that it's going to be somebody else. I know you know that uh, one of the things that's hurt Sam during this season has been his lack of weapons. I've also heard you mention that, you know, for a while you didn't even know what Denzel Mims, their rookie ride receiver, looked like. From the little bit you've been able to see of him now, what makes you think that he could be a good piece for this Jets team? 
I mean, you look at his catch radius, right? You see his ability, size, speed. He's only going to continue to get a little bit stronger. And the fact that he's not afraid. He went against two tough veteran uh, cornerbacks this week, and he still battled, and he still you know, won. And this is without uh, off season. This is without really having a, a, a great grasp of the offense. This is without adding the 10 to 15 pounds that I think he's going to have to add. Switching gears to, to your career a little bit. During your career, how did you use not getting drafted to your advantage? Um, I always had a chip on my shoulder, and I was always playing angry. That's why before I got here, and people knew me for can't wait. My can't nickname wait. in Baltimore was the Mad Backer because I was always fighting, right? So I was always fighting, always getting in a fight, always getting in a tussle, fighting for my respect. And that's what all athletes do. You take whatever you can take as fuel, and you use it, and you ride it. You get to the top of the triangle. It's a lot of people that's qualified that should be there that didn't make it there. And a lot of that's because they gave up on themselves, and they didn't believe. You have to almost be a narcissist to make it to the professional league because you have to be unwavering in what you believe in, saying, hey, you know what? I only have a plan A. If you only have a plan A, and it's this or nothing, you're always going to achieve that goal because you're, you're never going to give up. You're never going to quit. More from Barton in a second, but first, let's dive into the comments section. And Ralph, knowing what lies ahead for the Giants schedule-wise, what is the level of confidence of the fan base that they can actually win in a division? You know, I would have thought pretty good when you look at how awful this division is that they would have figured, you know, no one's playing better. Even at four and seven, they're three wins in a row. The confidence should have been high, but they're just not. They're they're kind of scared. And first of all, they're not used to success, so they assume that it's all going to implode. And a brutal, brutal schedule coming up. Those are four games they may not be able to win. They probably absolutely won't be able to win if Daniel Jones misses any of them. So they're not quite sold on these uh, fighting Joe judges just quite yet. Mark Sanchez told us that you were the biggest trash talker he ever played with or against. Would you say that the chip on your shoulder is, is the reason why? Well, no, I mean, that's part of it, but you know, it's where I come from, right? Yeah, I come from an area in Detroit where all you do is talk smack. Like, it was like, you know, we we're always habitual line steppers, right? We always was crossing the line a little bit too far and poking at each other. So if you couldn't defend yourself verbally, you would get ate up. We all had that time where, you know, you got that relative that come up to the, to the school with rollers and, and look in the house shoes, looking all ghetto fabulous, and you're going to get it. You know what I mean? But if you don't got no comeback, you got to be self-deprecating, one, because if you, if you say it about yourself, they can't say it. But then you got to be able to have material for everybody. You know, you always have to do your research to have, have your just-in-case stuff in case they ever try you. You don't want to be caught, you know, empty-handed without, not, without any ammunition to shoot back. You have a lot of experience with Rex Ryan. What is your best Rex Ryan story? When I first met Rex, he was a D-line coach, but the D-line always had more fun than everybody. So we found ourselves gravitating to his room. We would throw him into the, into the, into the, um, the wash basket and set up the other wash basket halfway down the, down the, um, hallway and we were pushed them full speed just let it go we also did media dodgeball so whenever the media came in on friday we would have welcome to the jungle we'll have somebody on the lights clicking the, the flashlights we had dodgeballs when the media came in we just start beaming them with dodgeballs <laughs> all right so bar which fan base could you not stand when you played and what fan base can you not stand now that you're in the media well, for me, um, when I was playing, for me, the biggest rival, the team that has taken more from me than anybody was the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. The Patriots are just most obnoxious. They're like the, the dorks in school that say, when you say something about them, they say, I'm rubbing your glue, whatever you say. You know, they're that one. You know what I mean? They're, they're corny. I always tell people the Ravens and the Steelers are the greatest rivalry in football. Like after the Steelers game, we didn't put pads on for the next week because we had to recover physically, so we couldn't afford to have contact in practice because everybody was so sore. And it's like, when you have that type of sacrifice where it's like, okay, well, we might not all make it back. Now, that's a that's a different type of rivalry. You know, you ever see those competitions where they, they hold a powder and they smack each other in the face? Yeah. And you, they go into somebody pass out? That's that's what that rivalry is like. And I got moved by a 70-year-old uh, grandma. I never saw a 70-year-old grandma move me. You know, her booty looked like a raisin. <laughs> It's a hard image to get out of your head, too, I'd imagine. Yeah. Once you see that, you can't unsee that. <laughs> For like a California reason. <laughs> like, who, first of all, forget who grandma is that. Who mama is that? Right. <laughs> who mother is it? Come, come get your mama. <laughs> you know, see, that's what I'm trying to say. That's about the rap. You would say, hey, Bart, man, this is an old woman. You're supposed to be nice. No. No, that's a stiller mom. All right. Well, Bart, thank you so much for your time. We certainly appreciate it and uh, really enjoyed it. My pleasure.
Let's get into victory formation. Ralph, you sent a picture of your holiday lights, which were very, very nice. But um, our producer, Gerard, specifically asked us to do this segment as an excuse for him to show off his setup. <laughs> well, that is one way to make me feel completely inadequate. You're, you're that guy in the neighborhood. And I've always wondered, Gerard, do you do that just because you love Christmas or you just want to put your neighbors to shame and show that you're better than them? Uh, I think it's a combination of both. Uh, I started doing it a very long time ago uh, before I had a child. And now that I have a child, I can't get out of it. And a lot of my neighbors look forward to it. So now I'm kind of tied in where I have to do it and kind of add on each year. I like that you admitted that at least part of that is because you wanted to put your neighbors to shame because that's the holiday spirit right there. Well, that'll do it for this week's episode of The Tailgate for Ralph Bacchiano. I'm Michelle Margot. Huge thank you again to Bart Scott for joining us. You can catch him every single week on SNY on Jets Game Plan and Jets Pre and Post Game Shows. See you next week. Can't wait.